Hi, I'm Loretta Bush, President and CEO for Authority Health. You know, we're getting into the holiday season. We're going to be gathering. And here in Michigan, it's gotten cold. So that not only means we're going to gather, that means we're going to be gathering inside. So in addition to COVID concerns, we also are going to have concerns about this being cold and flu season. Now, this is the month where we talk about flu vaccines and the importance of being vaccinated against the flu. So we're in the midst of flu season, but with much of the media talking about COVID vaccines, many people have forgotten all about the flu and about the serious complications that can come from catching the flu. But here at Authority Health, we still focus on flu vaccination as well as COVID vaccination. Now I have someone here with me today. Her name is Dr. Carolyn Custer. She works here at Authority Health. She is the Director of Quality and Community Medicine, and she has a very active role in coordinating our vaccines. Dr. Custer, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. All right. And this week, which is December 5th through the 11th, it is National Flu Vaccination Week. And one of the things that's important for us to know, I know there's a myth, and I'm going to start right off with myth busting before I turn to you. Many people still think that if you haven't gotten your flu vaccine before Thanksgiving, that you don't need to get it. So let's bust that myth right from the beginning. There's still time to get your flu vaccination. You still need to get your flu vaccination because flu is real and it's very serious. Now, Carolyn, Dr. Custer, I'm going to go back and forth between Carolyn and Dr. Custer. If no that's problem. Okay. All right. So a lot of people say, I never get the flu. I don't need to get a flu shot. Why should people get the flu vaccine and who should get it? Well, just like COVID, flu is a virus that can cause serious complications. People don't realize it, but millions of people um, get the flu every year. Hundreds of thousands are hospitalized and thousands to tens of thousands actually die from the flu. Um, who should get the flu vaccine? It is recommended for everyone ages six months and above. Okay, as early as six months? Yes. All right, okay. So uh, when people talk about the flu, uh, so there's the flu and then there's the common cold. What's the similarities and what's the differences between the flu and the common cold? So they're both viruses um, and they both cause respiratory infections. Um, the common cold typically is limited. Um, you'll have the sinus issues, um, maybe a sore throat, but they usually go away on their own within a few days. The flu virus is a little more serious because it can advance and can cause complications like pneumonia that could you know, result in hospitalization and other issues. Okay, so now last year, and probably because we were, you know, sheltering in place and, you know, for many months we sheltered in place and people were very serious about hand washing and keeping their distance. We really didn't see, you know, flu uh, as much as we commonly do. You just gave some very startling statistics there about the number of people who get flu. Um, this year with people moving around, people are talking about the twin demic and are we expecting to see a serious rise? Are we going to have like a double pandemic because of flu? It is definitely a possibility if we don't take precaution. Um, like you just said, last year we were very cautious because of COVID. We had the masking, distancing, etc. This year people um, have been vaccinated against COVID, so they're less likely to take all those precautionary measures. Um, and so we may see the flu rise in that, in that sense. Yeah. But you know, it's always interesting. I love this comment that says, you know, everything that I needed to know, I learned in kindergarten, right? You know, we learned not to hit, we learned not to take other people's things, but we also learned to wash our hands, right? To wash our hands and to cough into our sleeves. Even with the vaccination, aren't those some of the things that we should be uh, doing against the flu as well? Many of the things that we should be doing to protect ourselves from COVID, 
would also protect from uh, transmitting and getting the flu, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So any respiratory or viral infection, keeping our hands clean so that if we do touch our face, we don't accidentally transmit the virus, right. um, making sure that we socially distance um, and wear masks. Masking is still very important. It can prevent yeah. the, the respiratory droplets. Okay. So there you go. So all of those fancy uh, masks that you bought, they're, they're not going to waste. Uh, keep the mask on and wash those hands. It's still very important. Now, you talked about um, that getting the flu vaccine as young as six months, you said, but then um, also uh, older people and people with chronic diseases. Let's talk about that a little bit more because with the flu, you mentioned that it, unlike the cold, the flu can get into some very serious complications. So what are some of the benefits from getting the flu vaccine? By getting the flu vaccine, yeah. people that are older or may have some chronic disease issues like hypertension, diabetes, even yeah. obesity, they're at an increased risk for those severe complications. Yeah. So it's very important that they get the flu vaccine and then we all get the flu vaccine so we don't get anyone else sick. See, I love that. You know, it's not just for ourselves and that's really what it's all about. You get it to, uh, to help yourselves but it also helps the people around you, doesn't it? Many of us yes. have grandparents and young people around us and it helps us, but it also helps the others. So it reduces, uh, and even if you get the flu, because see, sometimes that's what I hear too. People get the flu vaccine, but then I got the flu. So it's not 100% that you won't get the flu. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Um, there are several strains of the flu and the vaccine covers the most prevalent or the most common strains that we see, mm -hmm. um, but there are other um, strains that exist so we have to take all those precautionary measures just just to be safe exactly exactly and so if you get it let me see if I can kind of recap if you get it you may not have as severe of a case correct and if you have chronic diseases such as obesity or asthma or diabetes or hypertension, you definitely need to get the flu vaccine. Absolutely. Because if you have those conditions and then you get the flu, you run the risk of getting very, very sick. Right. And the other thing is people forget, people die from the flu every year. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of people die from the flu, isn't that right? At least tens of thousands. Tens of thousands of people die from the flu. So, and, and many people are hospitalized from the flu as well. And that's a good point. With the hospitalization, especially right now because of COVID, hospitalized are, hospitals are at a maximum capacity. Um, and so by getting the flu vaccine, we can reduce the number of people who are hospitalized, thereby saving the beds for people with COVID or other diseases. Excellent. And then what about people who are pregnant? If you're pregnant, can you still get the flu shot? Yes, the flu shot is a killed or inactivated form of the virus, so you can get that. And we do recommend flu shot in pregnancy. Okay, does it protect mom and baby or just mom? It protects mom and baby. How wonderful is that? Yeah, it Absolutely. can save a life, it can save two <laughs> lives. That's right. All right, so many people think that when you get the flu, you just need to ride it out and just, you know, just ride it out. Just go and tough it out, go home, get under the covers and everything. Is that true? Or if I think I have the flu, should I call my doctor? Should I, is there medicine for it? What do I do? And I kind of love it when people say, I think I had a touch of the flu. Is there, what does that mean? I had a touch of the flu or I think I had, the, I saw somebody with the flu. It was pretty nasty. You don't think you have the flu. When you have the flu, it's pretty nasty. Um, yeah, the touch of flu concept I think is just um, a viral infection of some sort that causes similar um, issues. Yeah, but when you have it, it, it can be pretty bad, can it? Um, yes. So if you think you have the flu, should you, what should you do? And, I, and especially in light of COVID, because I know that we're not, we're asking people not to just go to the ER and all of that, but if you think you have the flu, 
Should you just kind of stay home and ride it out or is there some kind of treatments for it? Yes, so actually we recommend that you call your primary care doctor if you have symptoms of the flu. Um, the flu can be tested for with a nasal probe similar to COVID and there is an antiviral medication called Tamiflu that if you uh, receive it within the first 48 hours, it can reduce complications and severity of flu. Okay, so let's just uh, stop here for a, a brief commercial, uh, a commercial moment. So I'm talking to Dr. Carolyn Custer. She's one of the doctors here at Authority Health. And if you don't have a primary care doctor, if you're looking for uh, to get your flu vaccination, you can get flu vaccination at any one of our three health centers. You can get it at the Anne Marie ICE, Pediatric Center, you can get it at the Papa Family Health Center, or you can get it at our Hope Family Health Center. And we're smart enough to just give you one phone number. So are you ready for it? It's 313-824-1000. And then you just press the prompt that you need for one of our three health centers to get your flu vaccine or your COVID vaccine, or you can be tested if you think you have the flu, 824-1000, or if you're looking for a primary care doc. All right, all important information. All right, so once COVID came on the scene, everyone started talking about vaccine hesitancy. You know, I don't think in, in all of my years of uh, public health, you know, we always knew it was there, but I don't know that people talked about vaccine hesitancy the way we're talking about it now, but it's always been there. People were hesitant to get flu vaccinations and other vaccines. What do you think is some of the, uh, the cause that people are hesitant to get uh, their flu vaccine? And what are some of the things we can do to overcome that hesitancy? Absolutely. Um, you know, in marginalized communities, we've seen for a long time this mistrust in the health system um, due to systemic inequities that have existed. Um, and so one of the things that we can do is educate our vulnerable communities in knowing how the vaccine works and how it can protect and how necessary it really is. Yeah. Um, another source and that we see that more often today is misinformation. Um, there's a lot of misinformation available, social media, mm -hmm. the internet, etc. Actually, um, the one thing that separates um, doctors and scientists that people don't realize is we have specialized training in how to interpret data and how to interpret results. So. Um, we are looking at those numbers and trying to provide as much up-to-date information as we can so that people have accurate information to make strong, um, empowered decisions. So it sounds like you're saying then that Google may not be the best source or uh, your, your cousin up the street and what you see on TikTok and Twitter and all of that. Maybe better to talk to your primary care physician probably is better. But you know, so there, there are some things that, you know, seem to never go away in, in all seriousness. It seems to never go away. Concerns like uh, if I get my child vaccinated, it's connected to uh, autism. Uh, that's been a long-standing one. So maybe we can, you know, uh, do some myth busting around that. Uh, because as you've said, as, as a physician, you've been trained to look at this data, to interpret, to look at things over time. Is there any real connection between flu vaccine or any of these vaccines and autism? Um, no, there is not. Okay. There is not. Um, unfortunately, the study that, the, that was published that led to that conclusion um, was published in error and the data was not um, accurate. So no, we cannot say that. Okay, no connection between that. So, um, and you know, we're not even gonna talk about things like microchips and all of that kind of stuff. But you know, there are, are people who have true concerns that it will harm their children. But what we do know is that getting the flu can lead to some very serious health complications, especially among children and adults that have other underlining conditions. So we yes. wanna make sure that uh, we get flu vaccinated. All right, and uh, there are a couple of different kinds or strains of flu, aren't there? The flu vaccine or the flu itself? Both. 
So yes, like I said previously, there are different strains. Every year, the scientists look at what strains are most common and they develop the vaccine to cover those. Um, there's also several different types of flu vaccine. Um, there's a nasal spray, which is a live um, attenuated or weakened form of the virus. Okay. Um, because it's live, it's only recommended for ages 2 to 49 okay. to avoid people with um, immunocompromised situations. Okay. The shot itself is a weakened or killed form of the vaccine, um, and that introduces just the virus particles into the, the bloodstream in the body and mounts the antibody response that we typically expect from our vaccinations. All right, all right. So then since it is a killed vaccine, the flu vaccine cannot give me the flu. Correct. Okay, Correct. very good. All right, so I don't have to worry about getting the flu from it. Now, what about uh, if I'm getting my COVID vaccine, can I also get my flu vaccine at the same time? You can, you right. can. It has been shown to be safe to receive both vaccines at the same time. And think about it, we give our babies eight or nine uh, vaccines at a time, although they're in combo shots now, so it's not so many. Um, our bodies are equipped to handle that. We do, we turn our babies into pin cushions, don't we sometimes? Yes, we do. Although I, I, can, I can say from personal experience, my husband got his uh, COVID vaccine and his flu vaccine at the same time, breezed right through it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. It, and you know, sometimes one stop shop, right? That's absolutely right. When you're there, you might as well take care of both. All right, so we wanna remind you that everyone needs to get their uh, flu shot this year and certainly their COVID uh, vaccination as well. It's best to protect yourself uh, from both viruses. Both are still real, they're both circulating and you can get them both at the same time if you choose to. So it's just a perfect situation. Dr. Custer, um, is there any uh, closing remarks, anything that you, that I haven't asked you that you want our listeners to know about the flu vaccine? Um, just that it is an important piece of public health, um, part of our armamentarian or the tools that we have to protect people. Um, and that if you have any questions or have any concerns, just to please have that conversation with your PCP or a trusted person in your life. Um, learn more about it so that you can um, be best educated to make your decisions. That is perfect. So we would like to wish you a happy holiday as you gather this year, as you come close to your family members, you want to spread love and cheer, not the flu virus. So we are looking forward to vaccinating you. We wish you a happy holiday, and we are here to vaccinate you against COVID and against the flu virus. Take care.